Welcome to Right on the Money, the weekly talk show with interviews you can use to help you maximize your money and optimize your financial future. Before moving forward with any of the ideas discussed on the show, always consult your financial advisor, insurance professional, or tax consultant. Looking for financial help or a second opinion? We can help you in your search. And now, your host of Right on the Money, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator, Steve Savant. Well, welcome everyone to our series on packaging your retirement. In this segment, we're talking about debt, taxes, and interest rates with Safe Money co-author and retirement specialist, Kurt Chanowski. Welcome to the show, Kurt. Thanks, Steve. It's great to be back. Kurt, safe money. Yeah. How safe is it? <laughs> well, it depends on what you're doing. <laughs> okay, but there's a place to put money that's safe. That's Definitely. what you're, you're Definitely. saying. This was not a hard read. Thank you. This was really easy. I think any consumer can read this. I don't know. Is it out on Amazon.com? It's is out it on Amazon, yeah. Amazon.com. You can go ahead and order it up. Uh, you wrote this with another gentleman. Yep. So I just want to be able to say, uh, these are the kind of books that you can read, probably knock it out in 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Yep. In English, no NBA speak. Exactly. No deep intel from our industry. So a really good book. Thanks. Um, let's talk first of all about debt. Now, we have a new president. We sure do. We have a one, hey, the government's all Republican now. There you, it is. Just remember, starting January 20th, 2017, they own everything for the next four years. Yeah. So yeah. if we have problems, country's going to hold them accountable. They're going to put their feet to the fire. We're looking at $20 trillion of debt. Yes, we are. Now, Kurt, where do you see this going? Is it going to go, the new administration going to go higher, lower? What do you think? Well, you know, if you look at the usdebtclock.org, Everyone mm -hmm. can go out there on the internet and check that out. And what the anticipated uh, debt is going to be for us, it's going up. It's not stopping from what we've been doing. We had a national debt of $8 trillion eight years ago. And here we are at right around $20 trillion now. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, little, a little scary. It is yeah. scary. I mean, we're, I think that the globalization of the markets are looking at our debt. Now remember, the, the world isn't any better. I mean, I think no. they, the, you know, Europe and everybody all in, so another 65 trillion or right. whatever it is. So global debts, and none of the things you and I are talking about right now, the US debt at 20 trillion, yeah. the 65 trillion in global debt, none of this talks about federal, state, military pensions, yes. or entitlement programs like Social Security and Medicare. Yeah, yeah. Those unfunded uh, ones out there, wow. When we have to start figuring where we're going to get that funding from, it's going to be very impactful on us. I've always stated, and it's not a gripe, it's just a comment. Just remember, we who are in the private sector are actually making defined contributions into our 401ks, but our taxes are supporting government, federal, state, and military with guaranteed pensions. Exactly. I'm sorry, but somehow yeah. that doesn't sound right. Yeah. It, Should we, shouldn't the goose and the gander be drinking from the same trough? It hurts a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, it kills me. <laughs> I just, so, but, but why did we bring this up? Say, so, Steve, why are you bring this up on this show about packing your retirement? Because I believe it, Kurt believes it, we believe taxes, I don't see how they can do it. Even the new administration, I know Republicans are adverse to taxes, but Somebody's got to pay down this debt. Somebody's yeah. got to take care of these obligations, and we can't just ignore it. Yeah. So we believe we're going to pay more in taxes yeah. in, in our retirement, which was unheard yeah. of 10 years and, ago. And it's been proven. Uh, taxes have gone up as of late. Look what happened January 1st, 2015. We had those incremental increases uh, that affected a lot of different people. Uh, a lot of them were in the upper pay scale. But uh, even our seniors, uh, they can't retire with the tax rate our grandparents did in the 60s and 70s, you know, mm -hmm. uh, their tax rates are staying up there for retirement and, and they're looking into these things. I did not realize until I was talking to you how difficult it is. I'm looking at a budget for people who are living check to check as a senior. Yeah. The number one expense outside the future long-term care and medical costs, right. the number one expense annually for a senior is taxes, not his mortgage, right. not his living expenses, taxes yeah and uh, more and more people are coming to realize that and they're trying to figure out ways to adjust things so they can be in a less taxed environment and there are some good options out there well you have some of this in safe money little bits in there little bits in there yep. so again if you haven't read it yet you should read it it really people are looking for safe money by we're in turbulent times yeah I mean remember the night that uh, actually President Trump got 
elected, mm -hmm. the Dow futures were down, I think, almost 750, 800 points. Yeah, I, I saw the same thing. By the way, it opened that next morning in the positive. So, you know, right. it was all scary, you yeah. know, whatever. Yeah. Europe, Europe probably got freaked out. <laughs> I did. I did. Yeah, or they did, yeah. They did, and I did. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, when we talk about federal debt, we forget about state debt. I went out to truthinaccounting.org, right. right? And I looked at your top five states that are, that are running a surplus. I was, wish I was in that state. I'd say, send me my check. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The five worst states are in serious trouble. Yeah. And I mean, Massachusetts, Jersey. I mean, you know, there's yeah. some yeah. bad five, top five states are in yeah. hock. So yeah. it's not just federal. It's state level now. Right. Now, I noticed that when I talk about consumer debt, right, we were just now coming off the floor. We think, hey, maybe we got the job recovery hasn't happened yet. We're still living, right. kind of extending the, the recession. It's not as bad, but it's not as good either. It's the slowest recovery in modern times. But I notice that people are starting to get a little happy about spending, and they're looking maybe this Christmas could be a spend, you know, it's not going to yeah. be a spend thrift holiday. Yeah. But the problem was that when I look at this number, we're, we're in serious debt here. Yeah. Just a consumer. Yeah. We still have a lot of debt issues. Uh, reporting uh, lately has been that consumers' debt spending is still continuing to climb. And uh, that's going to cause problems for some people down the road. You know, interest rates are going to go up sometime. I noticed that one of the biggest consumer debts of all time right now, over $1 trillion student debt. Yeah. Think about that. Everybody was hoping Hillary get in because she was, was going to try to address some of this. I don't yeah. know. I think that's off the table now. And you know what? We had to go to school and pay our own bill, Kurt. You know, right. I just, you know, right. I don't know why people are looking to somebody else to pay <laughs> their bill. Uh, six, how would you like to be 22 and six figures in debt? Yeah, my youngest daughter is graduating next year. We're making sure she graduates with no college debt. And uh, there's not a lot of families out there that can always say that nowadays. But, you know, you're a financial planner. You actually try to live what you believe, right? Exactly. And so you helped your daughter. She did her help. In the, she did her job, right? She did some work on herself. Oh, definitely. So so she had a, she understands the sweat equity, what it cost her yep. to get her education. Yeah, she mows and, my lawn. Yeah, she mows your lawn. I love that. <laughs> so, but, but, but she's walking out of school. Unlike most of the country, she's walking out of school with no debt. Right. Okay, so this is a huge issue. Retirees, and I wanted to talk about this because I saw this on Google. Retirees in the baby boomers have been paying their parents long-term care costs. Yeah. They've been paying their kids tuition for college. They haven't retired their mortgage. No. I mean, Kurt. Yeah. Boomers are in trouble. This is a first generation that says we call it the sandwich that is caught between two generations. Yes. Yeah. They're sandwiched and everybody wants to help out. And, you know, our parents are living longer. My dad's 90. <laughs> You know, Nine. and there's, yeah, there's uh, bills to be paid there. And once in a while, you got to go help out. And on the other end, when it's our kids, you know, especially it's when your grandkids, you can't say no. No, you it's know? tough. So it's tough. I advise my people to, you know, keep the reins pulled in. But uh, sometimes they just got to do it. Well, now, if we're in this kind of environment, I don't see interest rates going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah, uh, it's still going to be a while. I think you're right there. Uh uh, gosh, I think it would be a good thing for it to go up a little bit for us, though, mm -hmm. but it's going to be a while. I tell you, listen, the government has to suppress artificially interest rates to keep the debt from exploding. Yeah. Can you imagine if we were at a 5% yeah. crediting rate? I mean, <laughs> Can you imagine what would happen if they decided not to suppress it anymore? What would happen to us then? I, the market would try to bear what it can. It would definitely go up. Oh, I don't yeah. know how we'll lo how yeah. fast it would go up, but the government yeah. would be on a the, the on a trajectory of bankruptcy because right. we can't pay a twenty trillion dollar debt at five yeah. percent. And I try and point that out when I'm doing my client reviews and stuff. You know what's happening out there, so they're aware of what's going on. You know if if things change, you know you you need your money. Mm -hmm. You need to hang on to it. So we're basically agreeing here. Interest rates are going nowhere fast. It's probably no. going to be flat for the next decade, maybe. But also, we think taxes are going to go up. Yeah. So I have to look. And this is why I go back to your book. You know, so I need safe money ideas, and it yes. isn't the bank. Yeah. The bank's paying me nothing. Yeah. I mean, look at the my mutual fund money market's paying me nothing. Yeah. So if you're if you're if you're a senior and you're paying all these taxes and you're trying to figure out where you're going to get more money and and Social Security hasn't given you an increase in four out of the last ten years. You need to search for more ways to save your money. Uh, and taxes is one of the biggest ones. Well, taxes are going to go up. I think and interest rates are going to stay flat. We're going to look for places for safety and return. Remember, if you're listening to our show on radio, iTunes, or podcast, you can view the video version online at rightonthemoneyshow.com and request information right from this segment. 
In our second segment, we're going to talk about tax-free retirement resources. We'll be right back right after the break. The number one fear of American seniors is outliving their money in retirement. Hello, everyone. I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and talk show host. The Guinness Book of World Records for living the longest is held by Gene Kalman, who lived 122 years, 164 days. And that's a fact. But it seems like science fiction to consider living to age 150. But according to a leading gerontologist, that person has already been born. Every day in America, seniors are turning age 100. It's the fastest growing segment among retirees today. And tomorrow, you may very well be one of them. Could your retirement plan go beyond age 90, age 95, or even age 100? Now you can purchase guaranteed lifetime income no matter how long you live. And that income can also include annual increases to help maintain the purchasing power of your retirement dollar. So just go to www.rightonthemoneyshow.com and click on the free income calculator to determine how much guaranteed lifetime income you can purchase. Well, welcome back to Ride on the Money in our series on packaging your retirement. I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator. In this segment, we're talking about tax-free retirement resources with Safe Money co-author and retirement specialist, Kurt Chanowski. Kurt, we're looking at your book again, Safe Money. Yep. I like safe and I like easy read and I like to be able to give a consumer an easy book. You can go right out to amazon.com, pull this down. Kurt uh, co-wrote this. It's easy, and I think there's a lot of cool things in here that I think could really help. One of the things we're talking about in this segment, a couple things are in this book, we're talking about tax-free resources. And when I first started getting into this about five years ago, about, hey, how, you know, is there how many are out there? Right. Right? I didn't realize it. Talk to me about a few of these. Yeah. Well, there's, there's actually four really great ones out there that I find a lot of uh, advisors and CPAs and tax people are not, you know, informing their clients on. Uh, the first one, obviously, is the Roth IRA, mm -hmm. and uh, you know you're putting your money in already taxed. Uh, so it's so, the, so I'm not getting a deduction though. You're not getting I'm a getting deduction. deduction. Yeah, but it's the old adage of the farmer going out to the field with a wheelbarrow of seed that he's already paid taxes on, and then down the road when he's taking in the truckloads of mm -hmm. of his uh, product out, there's no taxes. Okay, now I just want to make sure we're uh, because I think a lot of people get this mixed up with conventional IRAs. When right. I take my money out of the Roth, yeah, no tax. No tax. And that income also doesn't flow over to my Social Security provisional test to cause taxation on my benefits. Ex exactly. That's one of the stealth taxes we'll probably talk more later on. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it can cause uh, a higher payment for, for other programs that you're in, and that's not a good thing for seniors. So Roth is really, uh, it's actually a hidden protection because it's not going to cause your Social Security to go up in your two tiers and pay the higher tax. Exactly. Oh, I, I love that. Yeah, seniors are seeing the, the benefit of the Roth. You know, it was a lot of hoopla years ago when it first became available. And now, because of what's happened in the environment we're in, they're going, wow, how can I do more into that? And unfortunately, mm -hmm. they're limited mm -hmm. uh, to the 6,500 if, if you're in your catch-up years. You know, if you're in your mid to late 50s and you're sitting there saying, hey, listen, i got a boatload of qualified monies in my 401k and IRAs, you might want to consider, based on your tax bracket, start converting some of this qualified money into a Roth because, yeah. again, it's not only free, the Roth itself is free, but it doesn't dicker with your Social Security benefits. I love that. Exactly, yeah. Give me another one. Well, the other one is, uh, say, a, a, home, a health savings account or a flexible spending account, depending on you know what you know it as. Uh, it's defined more as the flexible spending. But that's money that you can set aside now, and this is really, this is a hidden diamond out mm -hmm. there. Uh, people aren't being taught really uh, how advantage, uh, what a big advantage mm -hmm. this is for them. They're putting money into their savings, uh, health savings or flexible spending account through work, and it's non-tax money going in. And then there's a myriad of uh, a lot of different benefits mm -hmm. that it can go and pay for coming out down the road and not be taxed at that point. I think if I had to do retirement over again, and I was in my 20s and 30s, I would try to fund, right now, the limit for a married couple is 6550 If you're over 55, you get to throw another grand on top of it. Yeah. So it's 7550 It's tax deductible. Mm -hmm. And as long as the money coming out is used for qualified medical issues, and even if you're young people watching and say, Steve, i got to wait till forever to do it. No. Yeah. You could take it anytime as long as it's for legit medical right. expenses. Exactly. You can use it. 
I have also saw one other thing. Did you know about this one-time rollover from an... Yeah. Talk about that IRA yeah. thing. That's hot. Yeah. There's a one-time rollover uh, into, into the programs to help save you uh, more monies, uh, keep more money in your pocket. And you need to get out with your advisors and you need to see what, what your actual opportunity is so you can take advantage of those things. What you don't want to do is you don't want to let time go by and you miss that opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, I have people that want to convert money or, or put money into uh, their Roth and they're not doing anything right now because they did a bunch when they were young. They're thinking they're okay and they still have kids at home or they still have mm -hmm. a mortgage and they're not paying taxes. I'm like, let's take advantage of that and let's convert some monies over and uh, put yourself in a better position down the road. Think about this, you know, the HSA account gives you a one-time shot to roll from an IRA, not a 401k, right. but an IRA tax-free. Yeah. Now, that's tax-free rollover. If you're over 55, it's 7550 If you're under that, it's 6550 yeah. per married couple. Yeah. And you can do that any time in life. You don't right. have to wait for that. And that's a one-time, I'd be doing that all day long and trying to make my HSA, my health savings account, yes. as big as I could get it before yeah. I get you to retirement. You want to fill it up because not only is this money going to help you, you know, people have denture issues and, den you know, dental oh, yeah. things going on. And you're going to have expenses. Your medical expenses aren't going down when you retire and you're on Medicare. So things like your prescriptions and your you know, your qualified spending that you can do with that for any other medical procedures. And, uh, you know, it'll even cover crutches and stuff. So and down the road. And it doesn't cause is, Social Security tax. And it doesn't uh, cause a Social Security tax. I love yeah, that. It's a, it's a win upon a win upon right. a win. It's just awesome. Hey, reverse mortgages, tax free. Yeah, reverse mortgages. Now, that's kind of had a little bit of a black eye in the history of reverse mortgages, but there's a new one out there, mm -hmm. and it's called uh, Home Equity Conversion Mortgage for Purchase, or, or HECM for Purchase, and it's only been around since 2009. But the parameters around that program are awesome for retirement. And in fact, me and my wife, were, we've already discussed it. That's one of the things we're going to lead to. You know, we've set our kids up so they're going to be okay uh, right out of the gate when they, you know, get married, moved mm -hmm. out of our house. So we don't have to worry about them in retirement. So there's a lot of seniors out there that they want more. They want to get right. more out of their retirement. They want to have more of the truly valuable things like, you know, taking a trip with the kids and the grandkids or just taking the grandkids. Mm -hmm. And to free up that money that's locked up. Mm -hmm. uh, and keep yourself from having a payment and being able to purchase a brand new house, heck them for purchases. That is phenomenal. a huge issue. And by the way, whether, whether you use the home equity conversion mortgage for buying a home, having an equity line of credit that appreciates, right. or taking plain old tax-free retirement income, you're taking income out of your house tax-free, and right. that also doesn't go to Social Security. Exactly. That's exactly. three. Now, let's talk about the fourth one, cash value life insurance. I mean, I just met a client that discovered he had cash value life insurance and he no idea he could take the money out of it. I was in shock. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, typically I'm going out and I'm teaching everybody and this is something that I believe in and, and I'm behind 150%. Uh, it's it's a RS code 7702. It's a life-based product mm -hmm. and you're, you know, depending on your tall interest, you get to choose which, which direction you want to go but you're funding money into these programs and you're overfunding. And you, if, you're worth, if you're with the right agent and they design the program mm -hmm. properly, you're going to get a huge bang for your buck. You can get your cost basis down to 0.9. And that's a tremendous value. And you, got it, you can't help but mention that life insurance is a leveraged benefit. So it's like when you first got married and you went to buy a house, you didn't go pay cash for it. You leverage your ability to make money with through your job to qualify you to buy a house. Well, now what you're doing is you're taking monies, a portion of those monies, and you're taking that and you're turning it into a huge benefit, tax-free, in, and, it, and it can transfer into so many different directions. Yeah, we're going to spend next segment, talk, we're going to unbundle this thing because yeah. tax-free, and there are so many choices here. It's not just a one-size-fits-all. No. And so think about this. And just a little side note, just so I don't get too many hate mail here. Yes, you could take municipal bond incomes depending upon if it's federal, state, or the city municipality. But just keep in mind that even if that is quantified as tax-free, no matter what jurisdiction it's under, just keep in mind that money still flows over, that income flows over yeah. to the Social Security account, right. and it causes Social Security. So I just yeah. want to say it's not one of my top lists because yeah. it still causes Social Security taxation. Yeah. I have a client, you know, 
they took money out and it's taxable and now their Medicare costs went up and their prescription drug costs went up. And the other things that are available out there is certain counties, you know, depending on what state you're in, they offer discounts to seniors who have lower income. So I have seniors that are paying property taxes that are extremely discounted and others because they're having to take money taxable or they did, not that they had to, it mm -hmm. bumps them out of that program and now they got to pay two to $5,000 in property taxes for the year. Are you saying that if you manage your income, you could even it could even affect your property taxes yes. in some states? Yes, depending on the what's available in your state and your county. Uh, you could get thousands of dollars in savings. It's significant. You, yeah, you got to do strategic planning of bundling of these types of options to keep yourself ahead of the game. Wow. Well, remember, if you're listening to our show on radio, iTunes, or a podcast, you can view the video version online at writeinthemoneyshow.com and request information right from this segment. In our third segment, we're going to talk about the types of cash value life insurance. Since we're on the subject, we might as well do it. We'll be right back right after the break. The Guinness Book of World Records for Living the Longest is held by Gene Calmet, who lived 122 years, 164 days. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and talk show host. Will you live to be a super centenarian like Gene? Of course, no one knows how long they'll live or if their family history will be any indication of their lifespan, especially in light of constant medical advancements. But the odds are ever increasing that a significant segment of seniors may live to age 100. But without some idea of your life expectancy, it's difficult to make plans for the future, especially for retirement. While there's no exact science in computing how long you live, you can get an idea by taking a life expectancy test. Then you can use the results to create a timeline for your retirement plan. And don't forget, when you take the life expectancy test, always answer the questions as honestly as you can. So just go to www.writeonthemoneyshow.com and click on the life expectancy calculator so you can get an idea if you're ready for retirement. Well, welcome back to Write on the Money in our series on packaging your retirement. I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator. In this segment, we're talking about the types of cash value life insurance with Safe Money co-author and retirement specialist, Kurt Chanowski. Kurt, um, Safe Money options. I love, well, first of all, I love Safe. And I yeah. love Easy Read. And I love, because if you can't read it and understand it, how can you implement it? Exactly. So if you're saying, Steve, where is this? Go out to Amazon.com, Safe Money. Secure your retirement dreams with Safe Money. Um, let's talk about, uh, you know, life insurance. Generally, people, every time I, we talk about this on the show, people go, Steve, I thought that was for protection. I thought that was for yeah. coverage. Yeah. And I don't think people know that you can actually use this for a tax-free income play. It kind of blows their mind when I bring it up. The first thing I want to talk about is interesting. In 1981, the law changed. We used to be able to take our basis out first. Right. And then they changed the rule and said, from now on, it's going to be last. But one mm -hmm. of the exceptions to the rule was life insurance. So... Basis. When I talk about basis, this is the money you put into something, right? That's right. your principal. That's what your original investment was. Yeah. A lot of people don't use their basis right in retirement on non-qualified monies. This is one area where that's a cool idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can put money in, fund it into these uh, life programs. And uh, it, because of the engines inside these, uh, there's no floor. You know, it's a no floor uh, program where you're not going to lose uh, if you choose choose wisely and have the right agent. Uh, and, the, and the program, the insurance product, can actually make money for you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if you fund it over time and you can start taking out tax-free uh, withdrawals and tax-free loans. So it's a collateralized So we're basis. taking tax-free withdrawals to basis. Yeah. And we're taking collateralized mm -hmm. policy loans against the cash, accumulated cash in the policy. Right. Now, the big caveat here, and I just want to make sure we say it, I say it every time we bring this up on our show. Yeah. It's tax-free as long as... The contracts kept in force for the life of the policy insured, right. not the owner, right. not the beneficiary, not yeah. the payor, the owner. Exactly. Okay. Now, that means that once I figure this out and I go, hey, I'd like to look at this as an option. Right. And I, again, if I had to do this all over again, I would do nothing in ERISA land, except for maybe my 401k if it's matched by my employer. Exactly. I'll do that. But yep. after that, I'm done. Um, Kurt, there... When, when I'm looking at this, I got par whole life here. I got universal life here. I got variable universal life. I got index universal life. All these here 
I have to sometimes figure out well, which one should I go to, and I've been yeah. using a pre, uh, risk tolerance test. Yeah, talk yeah, about that. Definitely, your advisor should be doing a risk tolerance test to see what your uh, parameters are and what your goals are, and then it's got to be backed up with a thorough fact finder. A lot of people are like, mm -hmm. why do you want to ask me so many questions? Why do you want to talk so much? Well, if we're not doing a proper risk tolerance test and we're not doing a proper mm -hmm. fact finder, we're not doing you the best we can do. And you need to spend that time with your advisor to make sure that what you're doing is, it's going to help you now, it's going to help you 10 years mm -hmm. down the road, 20, 30 years down the road, because People aren't retiring at 62 and passing away at 65. We're living into our 80s. My dad's 90 almost. Mm -hmm. So you, you got to have proper planning, and that's, that's part of it. Risk tolerance test is very important. I don't care what we're buying, and you need to know it. To thy own self be true. If yeah. you say, Steve, I need that. I, I haven't even seen that. If you want to write me at steve at writeinthemoneyshow.com, I'll send you one of our risk tolerance tests that yours truly participated in, yeah. in building for a company called Advices Advance. All right, now, so we've taken our test, and uh, people, go, there's some ultra-conservative people, they may just be able to only do par whole life. Right. That, you know, that's what they do. Universal life right now, the interest rates are so low, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not even worth it. You know, no, I, I, you know, actually, I couldn't even tell you the last time I wrote one. Right, I mean, that's how long. <laughs> Variable, listen, for young people who have a long time horizon, who mm -hmm. have the risk tolerance, you've got to right. have that as well, right. and they understand the risks, and, they're mm -hmm. pretty, and they have the timeline and the horizon to play, that might be a play for them. Yeah, exactly. Within a certain window, mm -hmm. that could be a great option for them. But we're using more and more this indexing option because it has a lot of thrills. And when we get to the last segment, you'll say this is a major thrill. This is why we talk about packaging your retirement. Sometimes right. you want to be able to say, I like the I like the one-stop shop packaging. You know what I mean? I exactly. Like that. Exactly. So so let's talk about first of all, tell me about index. What yeah. is it? What is it? How do we do it? What about those dividends? Yeah. Well, we're not get, getting dividends on our index uh, universal life. We're we're opting you know not to do that and we're getting the uh, uh, just the synergy of the uh, equity index type mm -hmm. situation for a lot of people depending on what you choose uh, to make money within your program okay so, so um, what I'm giving up on dividends because I, I can't think of any annuity yeah. index annuity or index life insurance that uses dividends so I don't think there's any out there so we don't get that but what you do get is you get downside protection yeah and that crediting account, not the full account, but the crediting account can never go below zero. So exactly. if we had a, in 215, you know, remember 72% of Americans lost money last year. Yeah. So when I look at two, 215, <laughs> right, I mean, yeah. this is pretty nice to say, hey, look, at, I don't want to lose, but hey, zero is better than exactly. losing. Exactly, yeah. I sat down with one of my clients and uh, she had put money in and decided to, to, to take this road because it fit her situation great. And to sit down with a 70-year-old female and show her how her life insurance made money, mm -hmm. she was she was just blown away. She was blown away. This is not your grandfather's life insurance anymore. This has no. totally changed. And let me tell you, if this is designed correctly, yeah. it can be huge accumulation and, as Kurt said, tax-free. Kurt, talk a little bit about premium financing with us because you actually do a couple of cases with other yeah. people's money. Exactly. Uh, a lot of people, if they're in you know a certain situation and they can, and, and it can be a regular individual. Maybe you have a good paying job for premium finance. The basic entry level is having a hundred thousand year, hundred thousand dollars a year of income and being able to qualify as standard. And then there's a, the true premium finance programs where you, you know, we have clients that are worth over $5 million. But I have one client who's a doctor and uh, she, uh, through her situation and her new husband, you know, have a substantial pot of money to put away, about 350000 And uh, into this premium finance program, we were able to take that money and create about a four and a half to $5 million tax-free retirement benefit for them that is all encompass, encompassing with living benefits. Mm -hmm. And that's truly what the, where the game is going as far as packaging your retirement options. It covers long-term care needs. It covers terminal care needs. So you added this on to it. No, they're part of the program. Oh, it's embedded in the it's contract. It's embedded in the wow. contract. So, yeah, you could have a 30-year-old female with a term version of this type of living benefit uh, life insurance, and she could get a million and a half of coverage for under $35 a month. What? And then think of that. What if she gets diagnosed with uh, breast cancer and she has to have uh, a full mastectomy, you know, and then she goes in for chemotherapy 
for another year. That's two years, three years down the road. If she's done well, they're going to have reconstructive surgery. Well, you know, I, I hate to say it, but there's a lot of people in that situation that they buy term because they can't afford anything else. What does this do for that female? Mm -hmm. It allows her to take up to the entire death benefit. So if it's a million dollar policy, she could get a check for based off of her million dollar policy to fund her. Because is she going to be able to work during that time mm -hmm. frame when all this is going on? Is she going to be able to take care of her kid? You know, mm -hmm. she you, you want to provide for your kids and, and medical bankruptcy is one of the biggest uh, issues that, w that our society is facing. And through these type of low-cost policies that have these riders built in, that they're not costing you anything to have, wow, what a home run. So this is this is one of your packaging for retirement. You like this. Yeah. And I was surprised because you said the person was so young. Yeah, but it works for everybody, Steve. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I have 75-year-olds buying these programs, these golden parachute programs. Uh, they don't like the idea of going out and buying long-term care because it's $600, it's $1,200 for them as a couple. And I can get them an IRS code 7702 program with living benefits, and it covers them if they need long-term care. Now, they can't say they have a long-term care policy, but uh, because of the regulations and codes in all the states, we can say it's long-term care-like, but the standards and the triggers to cover them uh, are the same as a long-term care policy. It's two out of the six uh, essential daily living uh, needs. So really, when you think about it, you're combining, uh, you could have a pension in this, there could be money in here, yep. could be a you retirement You could have overfunded plan. it. Okay, yep. and you, would also have, you could also have these living benefits that we're gonna get right. to in our last segment. So this is a lot of packaging going on here, isn't there? Yeah. I mean, you're really kind of putting together yeah. Yeah. and forming something that the client can one-stop shop center and they got that package. And, and you know what? It's saving them money. It's saving them money on taxes. Mm -hmm. They're not spending, you know, twelve, fifteen thousand 15,000 a year for these other little programs or long-term mm -hmm. care. It's, it's keeping the money in their pocket so they can retire and live good. Remember, if you're listening to our show on radio, iTunes, or a podcast, you can view the video version online at rightonthemoneyshow.com and request information right from this segment. In our fourth segment, we're talking about Social Security and Medicare. We'll be right back. Right. Over 50% of those who have life insurance may be in the wrong rate class and more than likely are paying too much for their coverage. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and talk show host. Sometimes you just need a second opinion to determine if you're actually getting the best deal. The insurance industry has just updated the mortality tables to reflect longer life expectancy, so premiums are expected to go down. And additionally, there are life insurance companies that are more benevolent if you have a medical problem than other companies. And when you consider that most life insurance companies offer lifestyle credits for those who practice good living habits, well, you could save a lot. But an additional value here is the vast majority of life insurance companies offer a free blood and urine analysis, a test that costs hundreds of dollars and with no obligation to buy. With hundreds of life insurance companies competing for your business, you could pay substantially less. So if you have a life insurance policy and you want a second opinion, just go to www.rightonthemoneyshow.com and click on the life insurance for a second opinion. back to Ride on the Money in our series on packaging your retirement. I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator. In this segment, we're talking about Social Security and Medicare with Safe Money co-author and retirement specialist, Kurt Janowski. Again, Kurt, um, Safe Money book yeah. out on Amazon.com. If you're saying, Steve, I need safety, give me shelter. Uh, this is a book that could really help you. Easy read. You could probably knock it out in under an hour, and it's in English. Yeah. I mean, it's not high in MBA <laughs> speak. I always love that. Okay, we've been talking. We did address this in a couple segments prior. Uh, we talked about the Social Security taxation, and yeah. we also talked about uh, Medicare. Now, remember, we were in the, in the, the, one, you know, the two segments ago, you said, oh, by the way, if we actually manage the client's income some states actually offer seniors a discount on their property taxes on the homes that they own. Yeah, yeah. That blew my mind. But one thing that you we talked about also was, you know, Social Security taxation. We talked about the things that don't cause it, but Kurt, there's a ton that do. Yeah. So yeah. let's go through the qualified plan. Uh, I mean, if I have a defined benefit or a defined contribution plan, that money's all coming out taxable. It the, is. the hell that money does, none of it has basis. Right. We got a deduction in the early days. Right. But now I also have to what? Use that income 
to qualify to see whether my benefits and Social Security get taxed. Exactly. Yeah, if you can sit down with your planner and do some strategic planning as far as possibly moving some of these benefits into other areas. Now, you can't get out of paying the tax, but right now we're in the lowest corridor of taxation that we've ever been in in our country. But unfortunately, everybody knows it's going up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you want to plan and, and see what you can do to benefit yourself because do you want to keep paying increased taxes for the next 30, 35, 40 years of your retirement? Mm -hmm. Or does it benefit you to, while the taxes are lower and more acceptable now, to slowly transfer that over in a 7, 10, 12, 15 year, whatever you deem, you know, whatever your mm -hmm. choice is, uh, scenario, and not have taxes added upon taxes mm -hmm. because of certain things? Well, I can tell you, most boomers now are trying to delay their Social Security benefits yep. till age 70 yeah. to maximize their benefits. I mean, heck, yeah. I, what do you, I can't get an 8% simple increase from age 66 to age 70 guaranteed. I Ex mean. Exactly. And what's happened in Social Security the last 10 years? Four out of the last, if you include next year, haven't had increases. Well, they, they actually said we were going to get $5 more next yeah. year, which point, is like zero. Point right? zero 0.02 or point two. yeah. Th think about this. All the time until the last decade... Uh, everybody got increases all the time. Those yeah. days are pretty much a crapshoot. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to get it or not. Yeah. And so, back when our parents were retiring, it was a 6 or an 8% increase at times. Unbelievable. Yeah, we can't get that now. All right, now on Social Security, so qualified plans, anything that's a defined benefit or a defined contribution plan, period, yeah. pension, yeah. whatever, is going to fall under the Social Security provisional income test to find right. out if you're going to be in Tier 1 or Tier 2. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you're, you're not in any of them, but yeah. more likely, yes, Tier 1 or Tier 2. Right. And if you're in Tier 2, you're going to get 85% of your taxes, your Social Security benefit could be exposed to tax. Right. All right, now, there are other things, like I, you know, CDs. Right. Uh, annuity income. Mm -hmm. um, I said earlier, and every time I say this, people go, that can't be right. Municipal bond <laughs> income yeah. counts for Social Security. Yeah, yeah. Those things add up, and uh, it just causes you to pay more taxes. Uh, and you're not getting any raises as a senior. So why not strategically plan and place yourself mm -hmm. into programs to eliminate that if you can and keep all the money in your pocket the best you know that you can mm -hmm. down the road? Because if you're not getting any, uh, any raises through Social Security, you're going to mm -hmm. need to get uh, more money in your pocket down the road because you're losing it to the cost of inflation already. Mm -hmm. uh, just a little side note. Um, I do agree with you. The Social Security, I don't know if we're going to get bumps at all. You know, right. And if they are, they're nothing. Exactly. Uh, that's why when I, I noticed that you like, you like annuities. Mm -hmm. Do you use COLAs on your news cost of living adjustments to kind of give a, a guaranteed bump up? There, there are programs within the annuities that you can do that, get a, get a cost of living mm -hmm. adjustment, and some of them allow you to you know, start taking income based off of that. Uh, there's riders that you can pay for uh, off of those, and depending on certain situations, it makes sense to pay for those. But what you want to do is you, you want to look at everything as a big picture mm -hmm. and put that package plan together to really make the, the biggest bang, bang for your buck. All right, well, let's talk Medicare, okay? This is, and there's your wheelhouse. If, and if you haven't seen my show with Kurt on Medicare, you can go out to the site or say, Steve, just uh, send it to me, Steve at writeinthemoneyshow.com, I'll send it to you. Uh, Medicare premiums. Now, first thing, you know, first thing I learned from you about seven, eight months ago on the show was, hey, by guess what, you know, your last two years of retirement, so, uh, you know, you're making six-figure <laughs> retirement. I think I'm going to come into Medicare and pay $121 for no. my wife and I, yeah. and I will wake up call. Yeah, yeah. Uh, based off your income, not only your Medicare, but your prescription drug. And then, like we said, all the other stealth things that happen. You know, you could eliminate yourself from uh, a deduction on your property tax as a senior. You could uh, have to pay, you know, max taxes on your Social Security income. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, our grandparents didn't have to go through that, a lot of them. They weren't paying taxes. Mm -hmm. They were paying really low number taxes in retirement. And that's not just, that's just not happening for our seniors today. So you really got to get in and strategically plan and look at all these things mm -hmm. and how it's going to affect you. Because, uh, you know, why pay 20000 additional in taxes a year if you can just make a change mm -hmm. and not have to do that for the next 30 years of retirement? Okay, so you just brought up something that's really important. You know, in the early days, you know, uh, when Ida May Fuller, the first re re Social Security recipient, go. who yeah. decided to really blow the system out the door and live to 100, <laughs> right? You yeah. Know? Okay, well, there was no tax on Social Security, period. Now, I don't no. know if they ever promised it or not, but there wasn't. Right. Okay, and so <laughs> Medicare uh, came on later. 
the, all this is we're trying to the government's kind of giving and now it's taking back yeah, right yeah and so i don't know what we're going to be doing to take care of these programs because these are two monster programs that aren't going away tomorrow exactly and even with the with the, the new uh, president republican legislation yeah. legislators they, you know this isn't going away so we got to figure out a way to, to delay social security maybe for for the younger people i don't know right, right. but but these benefits could change yes and this is really a hard thing but your biggest issue that you keep telling me about is if you don't do tax strategies, uh, right. you're going to make you're going to be making unnecessary tax payments to Uncle Sam when you didn't have to do yeah. it. Yeah, most people don't want to give extra money to the government. I'm there. And by not planning strategically for your situation, which is going to be different than anyone else's, with someone who looks at all facets of it, you're going to take uh, or you're going to be leaving money on the mm -hmm. table and giving that to Uncle Sam. And I want to pay my fair, sh fair share, but I don't want to pay a penny more. Right. Because I see what happens mm -hmm. with some of the monies. Yeah, we're not the most effective organization as yeah. a government with your yeah. money. Yeah. Uh, and that's a legitimate uh, taxpayer gripe, and I totally get that. Now, hey, you said, I thought I heard you say, uh, not only is my income determinant on my social, my Medicare premium, but that could affect the, the Part D drug payment, too? Yeah. What's yeah. with that? It's just like your Medicare. It, it, you know, instead of getting a $30 a month program because your income's higher, it affects the cost of your drug program also. So anything else in Medicare, not only the Medicare premium part B, right? not only the D part for drug, right. Right. you're saying that, it, is there any other income play on Medicare that I'm not aware of? Um, not that is really hitting everybody like those two are. Those are the biggest ones. Is the Cadillac plan on Medicare neutral to that issue? It's just like once you get to that part, it doesn't matter what you made. Yeah. Or no, it's still income determinant, even with the it's Cadillac It's still plan. income determinant, still with the Cadillac program. and and. Just so you know, down the road, too, that Cadillac program is going to be eliminated in a few years, kind of like the J was. Uh, gosh, what was it, 2006? But I, lo I, I love the Cadillac plan. You pay this one thing, yes. you're done. Yes, and, and your supplement picks up any difference, yes. But no, uh, but, but you're but saying no. no. Everything's constantly changing and evolving because of the cost. I mean, look at what happened with the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. Not so affordable for everybody anymore. No, and, and you the know new people regime. are going to get in, and they're yeah. going to fix Medicare, and that's going to cause changes in cost, you know, situation changes too. Well, I don't know what they're going to do with Obamacare. You know, I mean, the Republicans now they're in power now. Yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll see, see what happens. We'll see what yeah. happens. And and think about it. You know, Medic Medicare premiums. When you look at it, it's just like a person that leaves 64 years, 64 years old, you're coming out of Obamacare, yeah. you know, by a single person. Let's just say, I, I mean, even if you went to bronze plan, mm -hmm. and it's still four or $500. Yeah. Everybody's trying to limp into Medicare because it's 121 for normal, right. lower income people. Yeah. So Medicare and Social Security are determined by my income. And I, I just keep telling my seniors, please have your planner and your tax consultant. Yeah. Talk to you about how to lower this. We're paying, I'm telling you, seniors are paying unnecessary taxes. Yes. Remember, if you're listening to our show on radio, iTunes, or a podcast, you can view the video version online at rightonthemoneyshow.com and request information right from this segment. In our fifth segment, we're going to talk about living benefits that cover retirement events with Kurt Janowski. We'll be right back. Bye. Shakespeare once said, This above all, to thine own self be true. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and talk show host. It's difficult to make good decisions in life without knowing who you really are. And nowhere in life is this more important than making sound financial decisions. Creating a financial profile addresses your psychological disposition towards money, and that's a critical component in the decision-making process on saving, investing, and using insurance to protect your risk. Establishing your own risk tolerance is the first step in building a financial profile so you can measure your suitability for a financial product or strategy. There may be many risk tolerance tests available that can help you construct your own financial profile. One test that I use is a good place to start, and I'll email it to you free and without obligation. The test will take you about 10 minutes, and you'll be able to do it in the comfort and the privacy of your own home. So just go to www.rightonthemoneyshow.com and click on the free risk tolerance test. Once you calculate the results, you'll have an understanding about your attitude towards money. Well, welcome back to Right on the Money in our series on packaging your retirement. I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator. In this segment, we're talking about living benefits that cover retirement events with Safe Money co-author and retirement specialist, Kurt Chanowski. Kurt, uh, 
we're going to have events in life. I mean, we just are. You know, I was very fortunate all the way through my youth. And now as I head into, I can see retirement at the horizon. You know, I, I really, really blessed. I've been pretty healthy. Most of my stuff has been sports accidents and things of that nature. But when we get into retirement, 70% of people are going to have issues, right? And maybe 80% if we live longer, because it's just going to make it greater. I noticed that you like to package. This is why we're talking about this whole show about packaging retirement. You have ways to package almost every, I know this sounds crazy, but almost every living event that you're, living benefit event to, to match up to face. accidents that you're going to face or diseases or whatever. So let's go through it one at a time. But before you do, I want you to give me the def, this whole thing of two, I, I keep hearing this and my, I get mail on this, two of six ADLs. ADLs. What is an yeah. ADL? Well, th those are defined by essential uh, daily uh, living needs. So if you're in a situation where you can't uh, transfer yourself from point A to point B, if you can't use the restroom, if you can't uh, dress yourself and cook for yourself, uh, uh, what happens with these ADLs, uh, it's part of the trigger point for long-term care packages. Mm -hmm. And it's also the trigger point for a chronic illness in an ABR rider in, in a great life insurance program. Okay, now when you use AVR, what does that stand for? Accel accelerated Benefit, ABR, Accelerated Benefit Rider. Accelerated yeah. Benefit Rider, ABR. Yeah. ABR. I said, I think it's Yeah, Steve, there's a, there's a handful or more companies out there that provide these benefits to a phenomenal level for the consumers. Well, what's the underwriting on this? Because usually, you know, long-term care, chronic yeah. illness. Yeah. What's the underwriting on this? Uh, I'll tell you the truth, Steve. It's a lot easier than long-term care. I've had clients that couldn't get long-term care that I could get them a uh, life insurance with living benefits so they have long-term care-like mm -hmm. benefits uh, included with it. I'm surprised when you said, I don't need to have all six activity of daily living down. I only need yeah. to have two of the six yeah. and I can qualify. Yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty low bar. Yeah, well, this is, this is distinguished, you know, nationwide by mm -hmm. the insurance industry uh, regulators and by each of your states. And all of them have agreed that two of those necessities is the trigger point for long-term care. And it really comes down to, you know, the person in, that's left at home uh, that needs this benefit. And it, it's, a, it's an unsafe condition. It's not a great environment. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what their concern is. And that's why it's only two. Well, let's talk about the first one, chronic illness. What does that mean? Yeah. Chronic illness is... Uh, essentially needing any two of those uh, essential daily living things, the ability to be able to perform those, and that is the trigger point for every long-term care policy out there in America, mm -hmm. and that's also the trigger point in a life insurance for an uh, uh, accelerated benefit mm -hmm. rider. Okay, I just wanna stop you there. So really, chronic illness is in on this kind of a packaged system is really somewhat long -term like long-term care. care. It's long-term care coverage. It is. Yeah, okay. it is. Well, let's talk about the second one. And this is amazing because the three or four things that you incited here are pretty much what happens in retirement. You yep. say critical illness. Yeah. Now, what does that what does that include? Give me some illnesses that this includes. Uh, it includes end stage renal failure. You know, other organs that are failing. Uh, anything that's going to be critical that happens upon you. And there's a multitude of you know diagnoses that could cause this. Mm -hmm. But this is another situation. You know, this may may not cause you to need long term care. But the critical illness, uh, you know, all those things, you know, maybe you were diagnosed with cancer, maybe you had a heart attack, maybe you had a stroke, maybe because of that situation, you need to trigger that uh, benefit rider mm -hmm. to get you monies tax free mm -hmm. in almost every case. So the hospital case. bill may be paid, right? But the actual I need at home servicing—that's yeah. my problem. Yeah, and it, and it may not fall under long-term care type of needs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it gives you another avenue to get money out of your life insurance program to assist you mm -hmm. to make sure you're not in a bad situation. Well, except for except for uh, dying of old age, the yeah. three you just mentioned, heart attack, stroke, right. and cancer, those are the big three. That's probably 85% of an event yeah. that you're yeah. going to have as a senior. Right. Okay. Uh, what about critical injury? Now, <laughs> when I think of injury, I think, like, well, I fell down my step, broke yeah. my hip as a senior. But yeah. this is bigger than that. Yeah, critical injury, you know, it could cause you, you know, what if you have, uh, you fall down outside because you tripped over the sidewalk and you hit your head and you have a traumatic brain injury and you can't function uh, properly and you can't qualify for two of the 
uh, ADLs to get the chronic care, well, just because you have that situation and you have the uh, critical injury and you had an injury, you could qualify and get money out of your program there. Okay, so if for any critical injury. Yes. Yeah. Wow. It's, and it's, it, it is uh, determined by the severity of the in injury. Mm -hmm. The more severe, the easier it is to trigger more monies out of your program. Okay. Your next one is kind of interesting. You go to the doctor. Maybe one of these events have preceded you going to the doctor. Yeah. But this one is called terminal illness. Hey, uh, the doctor has given you, what, X amount of months to live yeah. or a year to live, yeah. whatever. Uh, what is the definition of terminal illness right. and how does it apply in this right. kind of idea? So the definition of terminal illness is you being diagnosed with something terminal that they know they cannot, cannot cure. ALS, you know, maybe mm -hmm. it's a brain cancer in the center of the brain, mm -hmm. you know, uh, maybe it's a melanoma cancer, and they just know it's, it's not going to work out in your favor. Mm -hmm. uh, the, now, a lot of companies have that rider specifically, but they don't have the others. The great companies have that rider, and they allow you to take cash out of the policy up to two years before you're expected to ever okay, pass I away. Want, I just want to make sure I'm hearing you right. Cash out of the cash value policy? No, or, excuse me, the death or benefit. the death benefit. Because yeah. they could have cash in it, right? Yeah, yeah. They could have cash. Yeah. But we're not talking about accelerating your access into cash values. We're talking right. about accelerating your death benefit. Portion, yeah. So, so yeah. I, if I have a $500,000 policy? Yeah. yeah, you're right, Steve. The whole idea of the life insurance is to put in a little, but you're getting a huge benefit. Mm -hmm. And these ABR riders take the value out of that benefit amount that mm -hmm. you're leveraging your money to purchase and that's what makes it such a great deal so yeah if you're diagnosed terminal say you're a male and you're given a terminal diagnosis and what do we want in life we want to have great experiences with our family you know mm -hmm. our kids our grandkids this could give that type of person with that diagnosis the opportunity to pull a substantial amount of money out of the program out of their death benefit and take a trip Mm -hmm. You know, fully funded by by using these assets and still having money there. You know, in the policy, in the event of your death. Well, this but is so, to, but, but this is before so weird. the family finds out you're going to uh -huh. die. You know, sure. to to have those good times. But but I know that my consumers are listening right now. and They're saying, but but Kurt, you're telling me about accelerate my death benefit. I thought I yeah. had to die to access yeah. this. Yeah. But not true in this. No, no. These living benefit policies with a few companies. They've been around for. There's advertisements, actually, that I could show people from mm -hmm. the 30s, oh. from the 1930s, Steve. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, in the 1800s, there mm -hmm. was laws against you getting anything other than a death benefit out of a life insurance. Mm -hmm. And things have changed, and living benefits have been advertised since the 30s that I've found record of. I, I want to ask you, now, when you do this, are you buying this, you have named critical illness, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, chronic illness, critical injury? Uh, terminal illness, just to name four of them. Right. Do you put this package together as only one uh, item, like kind of like uh, a la carte, or is this all one package? It's uh, for the good companies. It's all one package that they're providing as free riders within their life insurance policy. Oh, so there's no cost. It's actually embedded in their contract. It's embedded in the contract. That's why a 30-year-old could get a million and a half term program for under $35 a month. With these benefits? With those, all of those benefits. I'm sorry, that sounds astonishing to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. All right, now, oh, so let's make sure we understand. Okay, so I'm buying a life insurance contract. Yeah. And I'm a, so let's say I'm 60. Do you sell people that old? Is oh, yeah. It, it's still, oh, yeah. So no problem, right? Yeah. Let's say he's 60 years old, she's 60 years old, mom and dad. They put them on each their own so they can have it. They have these embedded Right. Living benefits, as you've talked benefits about. Living benefits embedded. I only have to worry about triggering two of the activities of daily living out of yep. the six that they have. Only yep. two. Only two. I know. It blows my mind. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to have these benefits. And the big one that blows my mind is the terminal illness yeah. is actually taking my future death benefit. If I'm here, right. am I understanding you right? I want right. to make sure I get this. Right. My future benefit, death benefit, and I'm now giving it in cash because of a terminal illness. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. So... Yeah, it's just phenomenal. Uh, the the fifth benefit that you have in these is there's also a lifetime income benefit rider uh, uh, that you can get in, as part of that. It's embedded also with the others. Okay, so tell me a little bit about that because that's guaranteed. Is yes. It, oh, by the way, yes, is it, it taxable can be guaranteed. or tax free? Uh, it, it, up to the cost basis. <laughs> okay, <isn't laughs> it's it? tax free. Okay, but after yeah. that, it might be proper planning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All five lifetime income. Wow. 
Well, that's our show for this week. I want to thank Kurt Schinkowski for being my, my very special guest. And before I go, remember what the good Reverend John Wesley once said. Make all you can, give all you can, save all you can. I'm Steve Savant. We'll see you next week right here on Right on the Money. For more information on this week's money topics, just go to our website at www.rightonthemoneyshow.com and follow Steve's daily postings on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. When it comes to retirement, money management, small business, insurance coverage, college funding, or budgeting, we have the interviews you can use.